Feminism is not a positive force for change. It's an ideology based on hatred and control. The reason it became successful was because it began to pretend to be what it wasn't. It pretended to be about love for women and freedom for women, when it's always been about hatred of men and slavery for everyone. They were very, very highly organized Marxist groups of women of one sort or another. Uh, when I remember being horrified when I saw them storming the Miss World competition, thinking to myself, how can these women talk about liberation for women and su women supporting each other and then go and bully a section of other women that they don't like because they're doing something they don't approve of? Put a woman behind the counter! Get lost! Freedom! If I went to speak, there was screaming feminists outside. I tried to publish a book called Prone to Violence. We finally did get it published, but I had to have a police escort all around England and there were death threats and bomb threats. Feminism doesn't say that women are the equal of men. It says that women are better than men. A feminist is therefore the same as a racist and it should be regarded as the same type of person. It's an ideology that is focused solely on providing women with advantages in the world within which they live to the exclusion of men. And most people who, most women who describe themselves as feminists, in my view, do not really know the ideology that they are supporting in so doing. About half the population at the moment, half the female population at the moment, seems to describe themselves as feminists or as supporters of feminism. And when you ask them um, what it is that they are in fact supporting, they are saying that they are supporting equality between, for men and women. When you then pursue them, as to what their notions of equality are, you find that um, it basically boils down to the notion that women are as, um, as capable as men in virtually all areas of life, and in many cases superior to men. And why I strongly object to the notion of feminism is that it only considers one half of the population, and almost always to, to the detriment of the other half. There is no way that I would regard feminism as anything but an evil in our society. I can put it as bluntly as that. I see it as a hateful ideology, somewhat akin to Nazism, in the sense that feminism discri discriminates against people on the basis of their genetic code and for no other reason. Any woman who proudly admits to being a feminist must be considered in the same light as a woman who proudly admits to being a racist. And how does society react to racism? The number of prosecutions for race hate crimes in England and Wales has soared by a third in 12 months. A feminist is typically female, but can also be male. A feminist likes to think that a woman needs a man like a fish needs a bicycle, but doesn't like to think that the bicycle was invented by a man. A feminist likes to think that God could be a woman, but not the devil. Some feminists think that all men are rapists. Some feminists even want the spelling of women changed to distance themselves from men. Feminists believe that sex differences between the sexes are not due to natural tendencies due to biology, but instead are due to socialisation. In other words, Lucy likes dolls and pink and wants to be a hairdresser when she grows up because she's forced into these desires by a male-dominated society. Well, uh, now, this is fun. A marvellous new take on Cinderella, in which Cinders doesn't want to go to the ball and marry the prince, who's a, a, a real nerd, anyway. She wants to be a mechanic. Mm. Or, uh, this is lovely too, it's Sleeping Beauty, except when Beauty wakes up, she decides she doesn't want to marry the prince at all, because he's... A nerd! And anyway, she wants to be a mechanic. That's right. And set up home with her best friend Susan, who's a football player. Such positive stuff, I think. That's why application forms use the term gender instead of sex. Gender means masculine or feminine, not male or female. The inappropriate use of the word gender implies that we have a choice in whether we're male or female. Feminists believe that women played a greater part in history than they actually did. There's an ongoing effort by women to rewrite history in the hope that no one will notice. Believe it or not, there were boys as young as six or seven doing one of the most dangerous jobs of all on a ship, being a powder monkey. But it wasn't just boys, was it, Jenny? No, there were women on board ship, and anyone who wasn't involved in the actual manning of the guns would be helping in some way, running the powder from the magazine. How do we know that? Well, there were contemporary accounts, but also when there was a Naval Service Medal issued for Nile and Trafalgar, then a lot of women came forward to try and claim that medal, but were refused. The reason these women were refused medals is not because the women were oppressed, it's because the women weren't there. Women weren't permitted aboard warships until the late 1970s, over fears for their safety. And so the idea of women serving aboard military vessels in the 18th century is ridiculous. The most likely reason these women stepped forward was to claim on behalf of a man or boy who died on duty. 
But here, Channel 4 attempts to spin the idea that women have been done out of their rightful recognition in battle. How about some non-fiction? Perhaps some simple children's history, you know, kings and queens? Queens and kings, of course. Here we are. This is just queens. Marvellous, strong, feisty women. Boudicca, Elizabeth I, Richard the Lionheart. He was a king. A lot of people think that. Because he was. But new research suggests that Richard may have been, in fact, probably was a woman. But due to sexism was forced to disguise the fact. Exactly. Like most of the early popes. Fascinating. And Henry V. I see. And possibly Churchill. Churchill? Yes. Winona Churchill. Often mistakenly referred to as Winston. A great many women don't actually like men, but these women certainly appreciate what men can do for them. For example, women who plan to be single mothers. She'll have sex with a man when she wants to have a baby, and she'll demand that he pays for the upbringing. But she doesn't want to be with the father, or have him in the child's life. Where they do stay with the fathers, these women see men only as workhorses and providers. Why else would a woman's first requirement in a mate so often be a steady job? Feminism has brought in an age dominated by a monstrous female mentality. A me-first, I-want-it-all attitude that continues to be incredibly destructive to us all.